Hey guys, so I did my other video that should be up on the channel right now, but I thought I would have like a little happy hour for us because in my other video I was talking about my little drink that I mixed up. This is my first time having like an alcoholic drink in forever. Um, and given the circumstances, why not have a drink? So this is my little gentleman Jack and Coca-Cola, my second drink for the night. Oh, it feels good to feel good for a change. <laughs> so, uh, come on, let's have a little happy hour. Since since we're all in self-isolation, we can't get out, let's, let's all just have a little happy hour. So go get you a drink. Go get you a beverage of your choice. Alcoholic, non-alcoholic. You want to, you want to like a Dr. Pepper? Here's you a Dr. Pepper. Have a Dr. Pepper. You want a Coca-Cola? Here's your Coca-Cola, have a Coca-Cola, nice and refreshing. You want like a non-alcoholic drink, a Gatorade, have a Gatorade. Go get you some water if you want, you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy right now. You want a banana, have a banana, here's a banana. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm gonna finish up my corn nuggets. I had some corn nuggets, you want a corn nugget? Here, here she have a little corn nugget. Actually, that's a little double corn nugget. Anywho, um, we'll share the corn nugget. Oh, so good. And instantaneously, we're having a mukbang, or mukbang, whatever. Um, so let's let's just have a nice little fun time here, a little happy hour social gathering here with our drinks and our snacks. Oh, this is actually so good. I'm so hungry right now. So how you doing? I know things are kind of iffy out there, really scary actually. Some areas are experiencing some downright tragedies at the moment. Um. Let's remember to keep those people always affected by this in our thoughts and prayers during this time. And also for the essential employees like the medical workers, the grocery store clerks, the drivers, like delivery drivers, truck drivers, postal workers, food employees, you know, all anybody who's having to work during this time battery's gonna die. So let's just keep everybody who's having to be out there working during this crazy time, just keep them all in our thoughts and prayers and let them know that we appreciate them. So anybody who's having to work as an essential employee during this time, thank you so very much for what you're doing. I know it's scary and, you know, uncertain times, but thank you so much for going to work every day and for helping people. Thank you. On to happier topics, more exciting topics. Um, so what's everybody doing right now? Like, what are you doing, like, with your time off? Are you catching up on some reading? Are you catching up on TV shows? Um, watching YouTube videos? Who are you watching on YouTube? Who are some of your favorite videos right now? Um, listening to music, like, anything different than you normally listen to? Are you going back and watching concerts? Um, I know a bunch of like artists have been live streaming on different social media platforms recently like the love of my life or one of the loves of my life Isaac Hansen of Hansen like okay so he's married with kids so I mean gotta respect that but he's been doing Instagram live stream pretty much every day now and oh my gosh oh my gosh like, I've always, like, ever since 1998 when I first saw Hanson in a concert and he did his little solo on stage. <gasps> like, I used to be a that girl, but at that moment, girl, I was, I was converted to Isaac fan, girl. Oh my gosh. Like, I was convinced I was going to marry that man. Oh my gosh. I have never felt so in love with anybody in my life. Um, uh, that's kind of sad. Uh, but... <laughs> He, mm, mm, that voice. Okay, so yeah, he's been doing live streams and oh my gosh. <laughs> I've been living for those, honey. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. That, ooh. <laughs> and another one. I wish I had my other, the other love of my life, Gavin DeGraw. Mmm. <laughs> okay, so he hasn't been doing live streams. He needs to be doing live streams, but man, oh man, oh man, I'd marry that man any day. I'm, I'm just saying, just saying, just putting it out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh goodness. 
What am I doing? Um, yeah, so, uh, who's your musical interest lately? Um, uh, again, books, reading any good books. Um, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We're, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull myself together now, or I'm gonna try soon. Um, in the meantime, cheers, cheers to all those who are having to work right now. Cheers. Thank you. Um, mm. <laughs> so uh, I I am so appreciative of not having to work right now. I know. That that's probably a horrible thing to say with all the people who are like needing paychecks right now and who are not able to get paychecks and I am I'm not getting a paycheck um other than if the government decides to you know give us that twelve hundred dollars here which I, I know is passed and everything but I'm still like I've learned in my life not to depend on things like that mental like hey you've got some good stuff coming towards you just i I believe it when I see it, okay? I'm just saying, you, you never know what's going to happen between now and then, so. Okay, okay. So. Oh, this is probably going to be so heavily edited, even though I hate editing it, but uh, there's so much weirdness and awkwardness beyond what's weird and awkward already. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, any, anybody cool and exciting on YouTube you're watching that's entertaining, like, I've been watching lately in the way of like gardening. I've been really into the whole gardening thing. Like James Prigioni is one that I've been watching for the gardening stuff. Um, I love his method of gardening. It just, it seems perfect. <laughs> and, um, then I've been watching my usuals, Peter Mon, um, some of Rich Lux videos, uh, Bailey Sarian, I've been watching her videos for a while, but there's been a, like a long period where I haven't really watched them. She does the makeup, murder, Monday, mystery, or Monday, makeup, murder, mystery, whatever. It, it's, it's good. It's about true crime. She's very entertaining to watch. She tries to dig up all the facts and details. I, I very much enjoy her videos. Um, and my dumb butt found out in one of her videos, like, there was one about Betty Page, and it, like, it cut off the first part of her video, or something happened to the first part of her video, like, when she was starting the story, but then, like, she picked up and said something about Betty Page being from Nashville, and I was like, hold up, <laughs> hold up, and then I went and looked at it. I never realized Betty Page was from Nashville. Like, where have I been? Apparently living under a rock. Uh, um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then there's one, like, okay, so, when I was in high school and had to take, you know, a foreign language, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming that it's like this at most high schools across the U.S., where you, like, have to take, like, a foreign language for two years, so mine, I went with Spanish, because I had had primarily Spanish classes prior to then, and so I stuck with, like, and stuck with. I went with Spanish 1, of course, and then, you know, went on to Spanish 2, and my Spanish 2 teacher, I remember him saying, like, he was from Wisconsin, and I remember him talking about, like, how back in the days when he lived in Wisconsin, he, one of his neighbors turned out to be the notorious serial killer, and I could have sworn he said Jeffrey Dulmer, who is from Wisconsin, um, or, well, grew up in Wisconsin, uh, maybe he's not from Wisconsin, but anyway, that's where the bulk of his murders took place, spoiler alert, if there was any reason for a spoiler alert, um, but the way my teacher explained it was that he, like, okay, so where he had lived and where his neighbor, the serial killer, had lived, like, he didn't know at the time that his neighbor was a serial killer. He's like, he was a really nice guy. And then he, like, went on to talk about, but he's like, later on, they dug up cars with the dead bodies inside where he, like, the eating them or some I don't like the cannibalism. Like, they discovered cannibalism and dug up cars with people inside and bodies. But according to, like, the story that Bailey Sarian told, like, there's nothing about, like, a car being 
buried in the yard so I'm, I'm like not confusing the stories <laughs> with what my teacher said or is that was that another serial killer I'm so confused now like <laughs> and the details do not match up with the story that my Spanish 2 teacher told who knows I, I mean my Spanish 2 teacher he was on the things like he knew things like I don't think he'd been making that up but I remember like he had this whole thing that he went on every year and he told all his classes about Nostradamus's predictions so he'd spend one class period talking about Nostradamus and his predictions and so the year after I had him my friend one of my friends had had him and she she came to lunch that day talking about how like the Nostradamus's predictions that the teacher had been talking about and then she was talking about like all the ones that had come true and then she was talking about the one in particular about how like the bird would fly into like the two brothers or I, I can't remember what it was but this was September 10th 2001 that my friend came and told us that was the day that the teacher had was going on about these predictions of Nostradamus's and then we all know what happened the very next day September 11th 2001 the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers so that was one of the like after after that 9-11 happened you know there's been a lot of talk about like Nostradamus predicted that with the whole tell about the bird flying into the two brothers or however that went and like I remember the next day or I think it was the next day after September 11th occurred and my friend was like, oh my gosh, remember I was telling y'all about that? And we were like, oh my gosh, yeah, that was just bizarre. Like that teacher in particular, there is something very, very, very special about that man, but oh my gosh. And we just went down a really dark road again. Um, anywho, let's, uh, let's move on to happier topics. Um, oh, my favorite show, The Nanny's On. Do you know what? It's it. anybody else watch the nanny like um i don't have cable so we ha haven't had cable in well decades at this well oh my gosh yeah it has been decades since like the early 2000s so anywho with my smart tv and having like the digital tuner built into it and using the little rabbit ears i've been using like um well i've had broadcast television this whole time but like now like there's like 50 some odd channels that we get um which is great <laughs> like free tv hello but now we've got this channel or we've had this channel for a couple of years that's called cozy tv and they've been airing the nanny like every day like all the old ups oh my gosh that's so hot Okay, <laughs> it, okay, so to you, it's this episode, the nanny song right now is one, it's the episode I love. Okay, oh, this is gonna go off onto the story, I already know this is gonna go off to story time. So, um, anywho, this episode, like, they've been playing Annie all the time, every day. I've seen the whole series, like, ten times now. Um, I used to love the show, still do love the show, I, I get kind of burned out on it but then I stop watching it for a while and come back to it I'm like oh my gosh I love it because I love the dynamic between um Fran and Mr. Sheffield like oh my gosh I love Mr. Sheffield so anywho so this episode <laughs> this episode I've got a story related to this episode okay so okay so this episode is on the commercial right now but it's like a Billy Ray Cyrus episode where like uh there's this kissing contest where you know young girl which this is really weird but it's like for young girls like teenage girls to kiss Billy Ray Cyrus and then they're gonna be like on some poster or something or album cover with him kissing him which he is a grown man he's been a grown man throughout his whole career so it's and I think he was probably married he probably, I think Miley was even alive at this point. Like, he'd already had, Miley would probably be a couple of years old at this point. So he was married with kids, and yet there's this whole thing about, like, finding a girl, a young girl to kiss him to be on this cover. Anyway, so there's, like, this lineup at a record store, blah, blah, blah. People go kiss him. Um, Fran, like, wins a kissing contest or something. Uh... <laughs> Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here in the episode, but anywho, so, you know, to prove her point that she's a good kisser, she, like, she, like, proves Mr. Sheffield that she's a good kisser and, like, mm, oh, puts one on. Anywho, so. Okay. 
now here's the story time so once upon a time when I first started my like big girl grown up working career life my first like real job was at Kroger <laughs> like I feel like anybody like that's everybody's first jobs around here is typically Kroger like <laughs> you need to build a resume you go work at Kroger <laughs> so um so I worked at Kroger and there's like a zillion Krogers or there used to be a zillion Krogers some of them have since shut down unfortunately around here um okay really only one just shut down around here um anyhow that's besides the point so I put in my application for one in particular that was very close to me like not even two miles maybe two miles away from me what not point being um I got called to come work at a Kroger that was like six miles away just down the street in Brentwood so I'm gonna say there's a couple of locations in Brentwood that's probably even too much information right there so um anywho and the whole thing was like um because with Kroger like when you apply for one Kroger your name gets put in the hat for all Kroger's basically like your application goes out to all Kroger's and the ones that have like the biggest need pull out of the hat what I mean it's not like a literal hat but you get what I'm saying so I got called into that Kroger because it's in a pretty bougie area and they have a hard time keeping employees there which um <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> who would have thought um but especially in that particular area like <laughs> revolving door <laughs> um so anywho my job at Kroger was working in the deli and bakery which we're, we're not gonna go into the details about that <laughs> I'm just grateful that I mean before all this going on in the world right now I'm just grateful that I got out of that whole mess <laughs> so um, one day I was left to man the deli by myself go figure and we had a pretty big deli area so anywho there I am in my little dinky hairnet with it like hurting my I hate wearing hairnet and gloves oh gosh so, mm. anywho so um I had this customer walk up to me and he looked very familiar he was like wearing this baseball cap and I was like okay this guy he he's this guy's a country star like I'm off the bat I'm like okay country star very familiar and I'm just like no nah, no it can't be so he's wearing this baseball hat and I what's throwing me off like in my mind I'm thinking okay his hair's too short to be Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm like, there's no, mm, no. Nah. And I'm like, Tim McGraw? But I'm like, his hair's too long to be Tim McGraw. And there's something off about him with Tim McGraw, but my mind just is like, Billy Ray Cyrus, Billy Ray Cyrus, Billy Ray Cyrus. And he's talking to me, and he's like, hey, sweetheart, can I get some, like, whatever, I think it's like Gouda cheese. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, like, I, I forgot what all exactly, it seemed like it was Gouda cheese and either like roast beef or ham. I Maybe there wasn't even any meat. I can't remember exactly, but he was so kind. He was like, thank you, sweetheart. And he's like, thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Like, every time I'm like, like when we had, um, when we cut meat or cheese for a customer, you know, you want to cut one slice and be like, you know, hold it up and be like, is this good enough? You want to try it? You know, is this the way you want it cut? Is this what you're happy with? And he looked at it and he's like, no, no, that's good. That's good. You keep cutting it that way. He's like, thank you, sweetie. So nice. And like, I've always thought like, okay, so like post like this or, I've, you know, Ever since he did that show where he was a doctor, like, y'all remember that? Like, nobody seems to remember that he was, like, a doctor on the TV show. Like, I rarely saw that, but the episodes I saw, I was like, man, he, he's looking good these days. And ever since then, I'm like, ooh, honey child's hot. Okay, especially during the Hannah Montana era, like, oh my gosh, and even now, oh my gosh. Okay, anyhow, so, I'm, like, thinking, man, this this guy, Billy Ray Cyrus, he is good looking, but what threw me off is, like, underneath his baseball hat I can see like his hair is shorter like that's I'm like this guy looks like him I'm getting the whole vibe Billy Ray Cyrus but his hair is shorter so like and he's again he's so kind so sweet so nice so dreamy okay so I'm like what what's going on here like 
it, it can't be Billy Ray because again the hair is shorter like it's just it's the hair is not right so I come home and I tell my mom I'm like you know funny thing happened and I explained everything to her and I'm like focusing on the hair and she's like huh and then like a couple of days later like there's this he here in Nashville um whenever there's events going on like usually the local news stations are there like you know the artists here like all the stars who live here you know they're pretty personable they're they talk to the media all the time like the local media like it's and like they you know it's like friendships around here like everybody's friends yay um so i forgot what was going on but i think it was on channel five that they like talk of the town or something um which that's like a local daily tv show like a noontime show or something that they play here anyway i forgot what i can't remember <laughs> no we were like spit it out girl spit it out so anyway he was like on one of the local news things and um she said that they were talking to him interviewing him talking to him about stuff and that he had his hair cut <laughs> he had a haircut <laughs> <laughs> and I was like and then like within a day or two he was like flew out to LA for um something going on with Dancing with the Stars I want to say I'm thinking that maybe Trace his is it his son or his step I think Trace is actually his stepson but he adopted him because I think Trace's last name is Cyrus but I don't think he's biologically Billy Ray's anyway I'm thinking that he was on Dancing with the Stars as a contestant but anyway I saw the clip of him like in the audience I was like <laughs> it's like it really was him it was him <laughs> Like, there's no denying at that point. <laughs> like, it was Billy Ray. <laughs> I waited on Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh my gosh. So that was a fun time. <laughs> and also, when I, like, I didn't keep that job for long. I think I was there maybe five or six months before I, I wound up with Sears. <laughs> <laughs> I wound up with Sears and I did not regret that decision one bit. I may have not enjoyed my time at Sears, but I did not regret going to Sears, like leaving Kroger to go to Sears. I'm um, just saying, just, just saying. So, um, another instance that took place at that particular location, at that particular job was, um, one day when I was over like in the bakery portion, like some of my coworkers were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look over there, look at that that's her and they're like ah! <laughs> like these are like dudes in their early 20s who are like fangirling like, ah! and like, 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 like okay so they, I was like what the heck is going on well, I was like what are you what's going on here <laughs> they're like look over there look over there and so maybe about mm, 15 and 20 feet where we were in the bakery is like the bread aisle like um of course it's a bakery like all the stuff like the table if you've ever been to like a Kroger I'm sure like most other big chain grocery stores are like this too. Like in the bakery section, they have like tables and all kinds of stuff set up with like the stuff from the bakery. But um, I know not all Kroger's are set up in this particular way where like the bread aisle, like the main like basic bag bread from all different varieties, like your Sara Lee, your Bunny Bread, your Sunbeam, your Kroger brand, like whatever, all like they were right there with the deli and bakery so I'm getting congested um <clears throat> so anywho they're pointing over in this direction kind of like in the bright aisle but like there's like some brownies over that way and they're like look over there by the brownies look over by the brownies that's her that's her I'm like who and they're like Jamie Lynn I'm like Jamie Lynn Jamie Lynn Spears like, yeah that's Jamie Lynn Spears and I'm, I kind of see her from the back and there's like a couple other people kind of near her and then like there's like this little kid with her and they're like yeah that's her that's her and then I found out like apparently she comes in on a regular basis or she shopped there on a regular basis so uh hey Britney Spears little sister was like right there like less than 20 feet away from me um I mean, she's doing her grocery shopping. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. Like, that's the closest I've ever been. And the camera decided that I was speaking too long again. But, uh, yeah, that's the closest I've ever been to Britney Spears. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Probably the closest I'll ever get to her. Um, yeah, so. Oh, and speaking, like, going back to Billy Ray. So this has just turned into me, like, name dropping. <laughs> like, yes, let me just drop that name right there. Um, not really. But... <coughs> So when I was in school, like going to college that is, um, the second college I went to, um, well I'll just say I went to MTSU, like that's a big school here in Middle Tennessee, <laughs> it's Middle Tennessee State University is what it is. Um, so I was in the recording industry program, that was my, and my major was um, music business, like so there's the recording industry and you could major either in music business or um, music production at that time. Now I think they have like songwriting and it seems like there's something else. But So I was a music business major. So, you know, when you're on that path, you take a lot of classes geared towards the field. So I took several different classes. Like I had, um, well actually one of my classes wasn't geared towards that field, but it was like part of it which was like American history of American mu popular music or something like that which that teacher I think there's a video here on YouTube and there I, there's no think I know there's a video on here on YouTube from a class that I was in and you can like actually see me in the video um not that that matters but where he was like demonstrating more. but anywho this teacher was pretty cool pretty rad <laughs> I think I'm gonna leak the video um in the description if yeah Definitely look for the video in the description, okay? Just just do it. You. <laughs> so you can see, like, get a visual of, like, this teacher that I'm talking about. So this teacher in particular, he hung out with Big and Rich on a regular basis. Like, he was tight with Big and Rich, like, back during the heydays of Music Mafia. Actually, um, he helped me get my foot in the door to go for an interview with the Music Mafia um, record label sort of deal. But, uh, clearly that didn't pan out for me. Um, I, I feel like I was, <laughs> I, can't I was probably too shy, awkward, gawky, uh, not very hip and happening, like what they were looking for. That's okay. Um, that was, uh, the, that was during a difficult time for my family anyway. So I probably wouldn't have been able to fulfill my, um, my job duty as an intern with the music mafia but uh anywho so home fry used to hang out with big and rich on, on the regular basis back in the day and also like through them he's hung out with like kid rock willie nelson you know he's he had some stories to tell let me tell you he had some stories to tell <laughs> but they're not mine to tell at least not right now so that just this is just like a prelude to like what I'm getting out. Um, oh, oh, Mr. Sheffield, and it's fine. In bed, <laughs> not like in bed, but they're having like a good like heart to heart. Okay, oh, I love them together. Oh, I love the show. Okay, in here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Get a swig of my Jack and Coke here. Oh, I'm feeling it tonight. <clears throat> so, a lot of my teachers, like, had had experiences. Like, I had one teacher who, um, <laughs> getting name dropping, and thinking about, like, tonight they had a concert on Fox hosted by Elton John where everybody was, like, performing from the home. So, I had this one teacher, and he was actually, okay, so, with the recording industry, music business, they were all part of the, like, the blanket of mass media, like, the mass media communication department. So, through that, just in general, um, I had to take a class, I had to take a bunch of classes, but one of the classes I took was like, mm, I can't remember, <laughs> okay, I remember the classes, but, and I had several that were all similar, um, I want to say it was Introduction to Mass Media, but it may, Introduction to Mass Media may have been a different class with a different teacher. 
let's just say it was something like introduction to mass media because I had several of those type of classes like and, and there's the other class I'm thinking of where we like learned about Tesla before Tesla was like you know known like we learned about Tesla and his you know projects and like how Edison pretty much stole ideas like all Edison's great ideas were stolen from other people especially Tesla um but anyway this other teacher what I'm getting okay basically the story is that this other teacher was a photographer like well-known like photographer traveled around the world took pictures and one of his biggest things he did like on the, on the regular back in like the 70s was like traveled around with Elton John so I remember he was telling us a story about the time that he was on the plane with Elton John when um it's a Bernie Topin 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 I can't remember like Elton John's like songwriting partner gave him the words to Crocodile Rock, which I love Crocodile Rock. So that always stood out in my mind that my teacher was on the plane with Elton John when he received Crocodile Rock. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so, and then I had another teacher who she used to be a backup singer on like, um, back in the day of TNN, the National Network. Um, I think it was there's several shows, but I think the one in particular was Ralph Emery's show with Shotgun Run. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, okay, we're not going to go into stories about that, but anywho, she used to be on there, knew a bunch of people through that, all that good jazz. And then, where I'm getting at, rounding it back to Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, <laughs> so I had this one night class once a week. I wish it was like one of those classes I had had throughout the week. Or, well, only went to campus, like, two or three days a week. But, oh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Okay, uh, again, TV. <laughs> We're gonna get this eventually. So, uh, so, anywho. He, he was, like, I think it was my artist management class. I think this was the one. So, I think that was the class title in particular that this teacher was in charge of. Anywho, he had worked for a talent agency, and through the talent agency, <clears throat> He become buddy buddy with Billy Ray and Travis Stritt and a few other people. Um, but those are the two that stand out in my mind, especially Billy Ray. He always had stories, always talked about Billy Ray this, Billy Ray that. Um, I remember this was like right before Hannah Montana hit it big. Before that whole craze came along, I remember him talking about like hyping that up. And then he was like, this is going to be, you know, the big thing. You know, it's it's getting ready to launch out there. Or maybe he had at that time. Like, I didn't have cable. I didn't know what was going on. I'm not like a little child, teenage girl at that point. You know, I don't know what's going on in that whole eight part of the world. But after the fact, like, after that semester was over, it was like, Hannah Montana everywhere. I was like, oh my gosh. Honey. <laughs> I mean, like, I was expecting it, but I wasn't expecting it like that. Um, anywho. So, I remember he was telling us that, you know, with the, you know, hyping up the Hannah Montana thing. Like, oh, there's, you know, big hype towards Hannah Montana. It's coming, it's coming. But he's like, but we got this other artist in the works. And he's like, you better write down this name. Because you're, you're going to see it everywhere. And you're not going to want to forget it. She's going to be a star. Like, a huge star. They're getting her ready to compete against the whole Hannah Montana thing. You know, be like her counterpart to Hannah Montana in the country world. Because, you know, Hannah Montana, you know, Billy Ray being more country, you know, Hannah Montana is more pop. Um, but they're like, you don't forget this name, write it down. So I wrote it down and um, name turned out to be Taylor Swift. So they were gearing her up to be like the next, you know, big craze with Hannah Montana to compete. To basically compete against Hannah Montana, you know, when, you know, when Backstreet Boys were big, then NSYNC came onto the scene. Um, what's his name? Sean Mendez, Charlie Puth. I, I'm, maybe that's not an accurate comparison, but whatever. You, you, you get what I'm saying. You, you hear, you feel, you know. Um, but yeah. So that, <laughs> lo and behold. <laughs> Taylor Swift, we all know where she is, like how big she is now, so uh, yeah, that happened. Um, also got to go through, the, also got to go to the ASCAP Awards through that, being in, like in the recording industry, majoring in music business, that allowed me that opportunity and that was fun. <laughs> that was a night, the first time I ever went to Tootsie's was the night, <laughs> that night, you know. 
<laughs> in a freaking ball gown. Who goes to Tootsie's in the ball gown? I go to Tootsie's in the ball gown. Um, <laughs> that was, woo, that was fun. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, how did I even... <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this is happy hour. Do you know? I, maybe we'll have more of these happy hours. <laughs> Because this video is probably going to be hour long. I'm going to try to make sure it's not hour long. But it might be. So sorry if it is. You know. If you're actually. If you're like me. Where you feel like you have to sit through a video. Towards it. Till the end. Even though you're not really like. Mm, or like maybe. Like you, you've got to go from start to finish. It's hard to stop. And just let it be. Unless it's just horrible. <laughs> unless it's just a horrible video. I mean I can't blame you. If you've already. If you're gone. Clicked out. Whatever. Um. Yeah, so, uh, let's, uh, kiki some more around here. <laughs> oh, dear goodness. Hell, oh, William Shatner's on the TV. <laughs> oh, I think it's for a CPAP machine. That, that's not funny. That's serious business. Um, yeah, so, uh, anywho, I hope things are going relatively well for you considering the circumstances you know may, hopefully things are going to get better around here but uh you know if you're like me and you're enjoying the self-quarantining thing then hey what, what let's do this again soon shall we i mean okay so on the really real yeah i'm i'm probably enjoying this way too much more so i mean i know there's like bad things going on but you know we're doing our part by staying out like we're not you know by being at home we're not spreading around or we're not being little vessels to potentially pass on this horrible disease to others so for that like yay yay um because that uh, that's really sad like when you really think about it it's it's a horrible situation going on in the world right now that which isn't to be taken lightly at all because they're people genuinely losing their lives and there's going to be a lot more losing their lives and it's really a scary time like I know there are people who are having to who have to go into work every day and you know worried about like what what could happen to them or what may happen to their loved ones um but you know maybe this can provide like you know the social distancing thing is good like I think we all need to distance in general like okay <laughs> I, I don't I can't put my words together and you know by like this whole self-quarantine thing that our self-isolation thing you know it's bringing families together who wouldn't normally you know under normal circumstances wouldn't be spending that much time together which I think that's a good thing like for me I'm not having to go into work which I'm so grateful for because I, <laughs> I'm not going to say too much about that because um, I you never know who's watching. But I, I needed the time off. Like, I need, there's a lot of people who need time off. I mean, I know there's a lot more people who need time off more so than I do. But I, I needed time off. And because work has been taking a physical toll on me for so long. Like, I didn't even realize the extent of how much of a toll it has been taking. I knew it was taking a toll, but I didn't realize how much until, like, I've had this time off. Which I've been wanting this kind of time off for so long. It's just, it's been a blessing in that respect. It's been a blessing for me. Um, I'm in a position financially where I'm not hurting, thankfully, for, like... And most of my life, I could not say that. Like, that, for once, I am in a good position. Now, don't confuse that with me being, like, well off. But, I mean, I'm in a, I'm, a, I'm okay. Like, I am fine. Fortunately and thankfully, and I am grateful that I am fine. And I know not everybody can say that. And for that, I'm sorry if people are, you know, anybody who's going through a really difficult, like, if this is hitting them really hard, especially financially, and you're, like, especially scared, because even regardless of the whole stimulus thing going on, it, I'm sorry you're having to face these difficult times. Because I've been, I've been in a low, low before, and I know it's scary and terrifying, and just hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Just 
Um, hopefully we'll get through this soon. But for me, it's been great because I'm, I feel so much better than I have felt in a long time. I really have. Like, it's just, in my life, I know it's like a pity party and all this stuff. And, like, I've had it better than what I probably lead on that I've had. But, I mean, like, not everybody has the... Okay, so not everybody has had the downfalls that I've had, but also not everybody has had the fortunate times that I've had either. Um, but, I mean, it goes all back to, like, my mom being sick, passing away, store closing, automatically getting picked up for another job, not having time to really process my mom's death, going through that the times with the other store and then it closing and then I had time off where I was able to enjoy myself and then I had a breakup. Then I got back on my feet. Then I got really sick from the job that I was at when I got back on my feet and then went to another job that didn't pan out so well and then fiance comes along and he's gonna save the day apparently and then that whole thing turns into a huge nightmare and I'm like that was almost to a low point again and even though I well we're not going to delve into that but anyway after that whole um I will say that experience made me very grateful a lot for a lot of you know basic things in life it made me very grateful for food like there are times where we were starving when we should not have been starving there was no reason for it to have gotten that bad um you know talking about the whole toilet paper crisis going on like toilet paper being sold out there are times where i had to dig through the change spare change in my car to be able to afford a pack of 69 cent toilet paper from kroger um and like i come from a family who like we always had our st like we always kept stock of stuff so like before this whole before the whole toilet paper crisis, like, I made sure I was stocked up on toilet That's just something I've always stocked up on. Made sure I was stocked up on canned goods, stocked up on frozen goods, because that experience that I went through, like, I remember, like, being able to go, when I, when I was living in that, we'll just say that other life, um, being able to go to the Dollar Tree and buy a $1 spicy frozen sandwich was like a huge luxury for me at that point in time so any I mean I yeah oh gosh how did I even get down this path um so basically I oh because that this this is the first time like I know I for year it's been three years it's been over three years now since that anywho it's going on four years actually um so that this right now this time off I mean I had time off when I went to Vegas and when I went to Florida but those the Florida situation was kind of like oh my gosh we're dodging a hurricane <laughs> and then the Vegas situation we were just on the go like there's no time to really rest it was just go 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 and I was didn't even have time to really process much of anything, but I mean, I loved the trip, but I just didn't really get to process things and really sit back and enjoy things. Like, right now, I'm getting to, like, sit back and, like, process a bunch of stuff that I haven't been able to process for years. And it's kind of, like, the most freeing time that I've had in a long time. Like, I, I, again, I haven't felt this good in a long time, and for that, I'm grateful. I'm not by no means am I grateful for what's going on in the world, but, you know, it, if you get the opportunity, like right now I've gotten the opportunity to have time, to have actual time, to not have to worry about, like, the little things. I guess that's, like, right now a lot of us don't have to worry about little things. It's, we've got to worry about bigger things. I... Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting way too deep and too serious more so than I want to, but, uh, you know, if you can, enjoy your time while you can. You know, I know there's so much going on, but if you don't have anything personally to have to stress about, don't, don't stress over it. 
joke yet. I mean, you know, we gotta take things serious, but try not to take, you know, try not to get too hung up on something. If it's not personally affecting you yet, hopefully it won't be affecting you personally, but I, I don't know. This, this seems really insensitive. Um... need to stop looking at the TV. It's an episode where um, Fran is drunk. <sighs> Anywho, um, okay. <laughs> She's gonna get in bed with Mr. Sheffield. <gasps> <laughs> this is horrible timing. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, take care of yourselves. Um, really take care of yourself. If you can... You know, do what you gotta do. I know if if you're like like we've been in our house, we keep the news on a lot on a regular basis anyway. But it's like you know, there's times where you keep the news on, and keep updated, but don't don't get so sucked into the news to where it's like consuming your life. You know, try to break away from that throughout the day and just enjoy what you can for the time being. You know, try to do something to take your mind off of like all the a sadness going on right now and you know do something do something for your soul like do something to help heal your soul like me that's what I'm doing I'm trying to do that like trying to heal the soul right now trying to enjoy yourself you know do the things you enjoy and my camera is gonna cut out here in a moment but take care of yourself and you know hang in there and we'll have more social hours maybe hopefully soon so um Thank you for watching. Oh, and cheers to you for being here. Good night or good day.